Um, it's actually it was my second night in Korea. <laughs> yes, so I'm um, yeah feel better today than yesterday. Uh, it's amazing uh, to be here uh, at this festival. Um, it's amazingly well organized, and it's really a, a pleasure and a privilege to be able to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, well, I'm very interested uh, in uh, nature protection, conservation topics, um, and um, this is something I'm reading also privately, you know, every day. Um, and um, at some point, I came across an article about black mambas because they are very famous, um, actually. And um, at some point, I think, well, it's, it's quite some time now, maybe 10 years ago, they won uh, this big UN award for their work. Uh, so there were articles published in uh, big magazines like The Guardian and uh, other publications. And when I read this article, I uh, had this feeling that there is a film in there because I was so put off by the simplistic way in which even respected um, magazines um, write about this organization. So I think there is a big disconnect uh, in the way we see conservation in the countries of the global north and uh, the way the conservation is perceived uh, in the global south, uh, where it often, you know, the measures often take place, the measures that are often financed from the global north. Black Mambas is financed uh, to a large part from Germany, and uh, it disturbs me a lot that people actually want to perpetuate this very simple, simple way to tell these stories, and uh, people are willing to overlook you know, what it actually, what is actually the reality of uh, rangers like this. And I thought um, one of the main, um, yeah, the main conflict will be that basically this job uh, forces the women to um, um, yeah, help arrest, um, you know, people from the community um, who don't have any other um, yeah, alternative um, but to go poach. Um, because also it's in the film, it's very important to understand that there are these two types of poaching. Uh, one is this uh, highly organized poaching of um, endangered spe species like rhinos. Uh, and the other type of poaching is this bushmeat poaching. And, and the bushmeat poachers are, are really, it's, it's really the economic reason. Um, you know, they have to survive, they have to uh, feed their families. Um, and it's not that simple, but um, it's still, it's much more complicated than the way we used, you know, we read about this. Yeah, you, you have to uh, show me what you mean. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's a kind of kind of an observational, just an observa observational way to shoot, I guess. With yeah, filming behind. I, I don't know. We just, you know, in our style, we try to uh, adapt uh, to the um, content uh, a lot. Because actually, it's funny. You know, the research trip we filmed completely differently. Or, for example, I usually I don't like interviews at all uh, in my films. I hate interviews. But in this particular case, I thought that the characters, you know, the way they um, put themselves, uh, you know, in front of the camera, that also told a story on its own. So that's why we decided to take these interview images. In this film, uh, the particular challenge uh, was not to uh, stylize it too much. Though I'm very particular about the aesthetics that I use, but in this film, um, this extreme stylization, uh, it felt like we are objectifying them once again, you know, though they are objectified already on so many levels. Yeah, this is very interesting. Um, because basically, maybe for everyone, fortress conservation means that uh, we protect the nature by putting local population away from, like, protecting the nature from local population, uh, um, deny access, you know, which is a very colonial thing to do because this land actually belonged to, to them. You know, so this is very problematic um, out of so many reasons. And um, what is interesting, um, it is, st even though the park is so close to them, uh, it is actually in the head, it's so far away. And um, there are, I think, um, three million people living in the communities bordering the park. If you imagine 
so many people, and uh, I think 80% are uh, without a job, and the park is one of the main employers uh, for the people. But obviously, you know, three million people cannot find jobs there. So, and they say, as a crack says, yeah, you either work in the park or you poach in the park. But the park is a very important part of their lives. Um, at the same time. There is no tradition of uh, going to the park on the weekend or something because, and even now, if you ask uh, them, a lot of them will say, "Oh, it's for for white white men. The, the park is for old white men." They would say things like this, and uh, even you know when you cross uh, when you go into the park, it's like op visually it is. Uh, th this is this is whom you see. You see white people in these lodges. And there are a lot of educational programs at schools or a lot of programs um, particularly f financed from the Global North, uh, working with children uh, from the local communities where they teach them you know, the value of, of uh, animals. Uh, and um, so it, it, you, know, you can find all, often in the super racist uh, this idea we have to teach them the value of animals, you know, because as if it's the problem. Uh, as if there is, you know, there is no reason why actually they were so. They feel this distance, you know, not because they don't see the value, but you know, if um, basically it's, there is also this economical thing because it's still they still do not profit uh, from the park, even though it's, it used to be their land. Um, a lot of people were forcefully removed uh, while the park was uh, founded. So. You know, there's this whole history that um, has never been properly addressed. Um, whole, a lot of things to unpack, and um, you know, t till the moment when they, uh, when the local communities can profit financially from the park, uh, there won't be the proper appreciation of it, and it's um, totally logic, logical why. So far, actually, uh, the reason that they disappeared was COVID and the pandemic, um, and now they're all back there again. So uh, the future is uh, is bright for Black Mama. <laughs> the poachers are back. The poachers are back. <laughs> well, yeah, no, uh, particularly because of the rhino poaching, it is something for abroad. It's from the markets abroad. Uh, so when the borders were closed during the pandemic, then uh, of course, um, yeah, and also when there are no tourists because of the pandemic, you could also see. Um, it just was impossible for the poachers to operate in these parks because you could see where they are easily when there are no other people. So um, after the pandemic um, is over, um, it's basically it's they are active again there. Um, I just want to add some aspect uh, also um, the trophy hunting, you know, which is not in the film, uh, but it's a, a huge uh, problem on its own. You know, there are films about it. Um, uh, white uh, rich tourists can come in, pay money, and shoot an elephant, for example. And then they say, uh, "Oh, but we share with the communities." But this is not true. You know, they uh, they they give meat away or things like this. But you know, the the, the share is just it's not um, adequate. <laughs>